I want to give you guys a lesson in phonetics. I think it's very, very important. If you're an MC, I do weddings, right? So like this is huge for me, but just any general MC, you know, you want to know how to pronounce what you're trying to say. I'm going to show you guys how I do this and my little systems, okay? This is what I do. You got to do what you like. I'm not saying this is the only way, but this is just what I do, and I figure maybe it'll help you, okay? Little lesson in phonetics. I run my phonetics on three simple rules, okay? Three rules to my phonetics. Rule number one, always get the phonetics in advance. Do not get them the day of. I know a lot of DJs that do not get the phonetics in advance. And then basically what you do is, you know, while you're lining up the wedding party and stuff, you're about to do intros, you're going through and then you're confirming phonetics and writing it down, right? Last minute. I think it's a bad idea because number one, you don't want to do anything last minute, okay? You want to worry about the party and that's it. Doing that shit last minute, even if you're used to it, you know, there's still more room for hiccups. What if you run into a really hard name that you might have to practice once or twice, you know? And you're doing it and that hard name is the third person of a 10, 10 couple bridal party and you're in between, you know what I mean? Like it, you can get more messed up. If you get it all ahead of time from the, from the couple, you're, you're prepared, you have it set up. Maybe you gotta make a tweak. Every once in a while, the couple gives me the wrong phonetic or I might've misheard them. You make a little tweak, but otherwise you're prepared. You could practice it ahead of time. I don't know if you guys do this, but I always basically, um, like before, like during cocktail hour, during, you know, during my quiet time, I'll go through the whole intros, kind of just read them in my head. You know what I mean? Just kind of get familiar with it and stuff. So if you have the phonetics ahead of time, you can like get familiar with the phonetics ahead of time. You could do that. You know, you could practice the actual phonetics, be ready. Also, when you line them up, right? When you're actually doing about to do intros and you're lining them up, you, you know, nail a hard name. It's impressive. Everyone's like, whoa, how'd you nail that? And I'm like, oh, just magic. You know, I've just been doing it forever. I totally take credit. <laughs> When in reality, the couple told me, but you know what I mean? It looks good all around. It's easier. It's going to save you a lot of trouble and it's going to stack the deck in your favor to make sure that you get all the names right. Okay. So that's rule number one. You get it ahead of time. Rule number two, make your own rules. What I mean by this is there actually is an official phonetic system. You know, like if you, I'm sure there's a website too. I didn't even look it up, but like, you know, if you wanted to pronounce a certain name, you know, there's actually like official phonetics, like, like there, there's a whole, like almost alphabet or system or whatever the hell you want to call it. I don't use that system. I don't, I didn't memorize that system. I made my own system because I feel like phonetics is something that has to make sense to you, you know? So it's how I sound out. Your accent might be different. You're, you know what I mean? Everyone speaks a certain way when you hear a name and then you pronounce it out loud and then you write it out phonetically, you want it to make sense to you. You're the only one that has to read it. You know, you're not writing phonetics for someone else. It's for you. You just, just, just make it. And I'm going to show you in a second how I do mine. And you know, so it makes sense, right? It just, it's got to make sense to you. Don't worry about the official way, just whatever works best for you. And the third rule is never to assume. You don't want to assume how to pronounce something. Okay. Sometimes the most simplest of names can be pronounced wrong because you didn't ask, you just assumed 99 other times that you saw that name, it was pronounced this way, but this one time it was pronounced another way, you know? It could be Nick, N-I-C-K, but maybe it's pronounced Nick. I am Nick. I am not Nick. I am Nick. Nick, you know? N-E-E-K. Let's talk for next. Okay, hurry. First of all, as far as assuming, first names is a big one. Don't assume first names. These are a couple, like two doozies I run into all the time, and I always confirm is Brianna and Diana, right? Brianna could be Brianna or Brianna, spelled the same exact way. Deanna could be Deanna or Diana, and you could say Deanna sometimes spelled D-E-A-N-N, -N, you know, and that's always Deanna, but like, I've literally had D-I-A-N-A -A just like this, but it's pronounced Deanna. You always want to confirm that, and this is basically how I write that out. So if I'm doing my sheet, if it's Brianna, like with an A, I have the A in parentheses. If it's Brianna with the Anna, I have the Anna in parentheses. That's just how I personally do it. You got to do it so it makes sense for you, but make sure you confirm this, Okay. And basically when I meet with the couple and I'm going through this, I always say every name out loud. So as I'm going through, even if we're just doing first names for intros, I'm doing like, okay, you know, Jose and Brianna. It's Brianna, right? Okay, cool. Uh, Nick and uh, Chelsea, Stephanie. And, you know, and I literally say all, even the basic names all out loud because that gives the couple an opportunity to correct you. If you say it wrong, oh, no, no, it's this. Oh, cool. That's why we do this. And then I make the correction. So always say everything out loud as you're going over it in the meeting. And then the second, the second time you do that is when you're lining them up at the actual wedding. You say it out loud again. They'll correct you then again. And then you know for a fact. So if nobody correct you the first time, nobody correct you the second time, you know you're going to nail that shit. And that's how you bat a thousand. Okay? Now, let's talk last names. I'll give you a couple examples and how I write them out phonetically personally. 
But again, you got to do it so it makes sense for you, but at least this will give you like an idea, you know, of, you know, kind of how I do it and you can kind of apply it to your own, you know, the way your workflow and the way you do it. So this is actually a couple for this weekend. I thought it was Lombrazo. It's actually Lombrazo. So that's how I did the phonetics here. That's for this weekend. Lombrazo. 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 One of the hardest last names I ever had. I'll never forget this last name. I did a bunch of weddings for his family. Shout out to his entire family. This is, right, pronounced De Benedictus. De Benedictus. De Benedictus. De Benedictus. It's a five syllable last name. Uh, they had a couple brothers, um, and uh, I did a bunch of weddings for this whole family. But uh, but yeah, it was one of those doozies I'll never forget because I had to say because they had so many brothers and so many like men in their family. Like there's so many intros and we did last names. The Benedictus, the Benedictus. Like this is one of those names I had to practice in the shower that morning, you know. But so I do de de is d e h to me. It's not the official phonetic way, and you might think that's you know it doesn't work for you. You got to make it make sense for you. Ben a eh, dick. Anytime I could do like a dick or an ass, you know what I mean? In there, I always throw it in there because it just like gives me a chuckle. <laughs> to be honest with you, <laughs> I could have totally just did D-I-K or something. But yeah, m- might as well make it a dick. De Ben Edictis. Works for me. Okay. Now, if you're one of those people that your mind's in the gutter and you see T-I-S and you automatically think tits and you don't want to say tits at the end, then maybe capitalize it. You know, tis. You know, if it's a word that you glance at and you kind of like misinterpret it in your head, you know, you ever do that, then that's kind of when you want to like capitalize it. So it's like more bold and you go, okay, tis. And then just take your time. The Benedictus, the Benedictus, the Benedictus. Before you know it, it rolls off your tongue. And then here's a popular one. Okay. As a third example, Schwarzenegger, my man, Arnold, right? Arnold Schwarzenegger. The, the way I would do it is Schwartz Schwarzenegger. Exactly like that. Schwarzenegger. Some people might break it down a little more, more hyphens, more parts. To me, Schwartz is an easy one. That's one whole, because I kind of try and break it down by the syllables. So it's Schwartz and Neger. Schwartz and Neger. Schwartz and Neger. Bam. You know what I mean? It's kind of blocking me. I didn't think this through. All right, here, right there. 